Assalamu alaikum dear students how are you people i hope you're all fine so today we are going to study about because i could not stop for death this is a poem by emily dickinson so the contents of this video will be stanza wise explanation analysis of the poem the important contrast which are portrayed in this poem personification of death and last but not the least the poetic devices so let's get started because i could not stop for death by emily dickinson because i could not stop for death he kindly stopped for me the carriage held but just ourselves and immortality we slowly drove he knew no haste and i had put away my labor and my leisure too for his civility we passed the school where children strove and at traces in the ring we passed the fields of gazing grain we passed the setting sun or rather he passed us the dews drew quivering and chill for only gossamer my gown my tippet my chair we passed before a house that seemed a swelling of the ground the roof was scarcely visible the cornice in the ground since then this centuries and yet feels shorter than the day i first surmised the horses heads were towards eternity so this was the text of this poem now we'll move forward to the explanation which is stanza wise stanza number 1 the speaker represents the human race when she declares that she is too busy to think about death it has become our primordial instinct to survive through all the difficulties posed by the community but death never forgets and comes after those whose time is this in this realm is over to the speaker death is kind and offers a chariot to take her away there is a lot of perplexity about the inclusion of immortality in the last line of the stanza as the speaker says that the chariot has death hurt and immortality the reason for the inclusion of the word can only be understood from the meaning of the last stanza now the stanza number 2 the speaker considers death as war who shows civility in his manners she expresses pleasantness about the speedy handling of the chariot by death in response she forgets all her labor and leisure to enjoy the ride the description of the chariot ride can be interpreted as a smooth passing of the soul after death and the person has left the world without having to struggle too much nor with pain stanza number 3 the third stanza in this poem because i could not stop for death through three through three various descriptions gives a complete cycle of death the shadowed passes children playfully uh, playing joyfully indicating the innocent childhood the grazing um, grain um, attaining fruitfulness indicating manhood and the setting sun dawning light indicating the old age where one waits for the darkness to take over so the poem uses symbolism so this is actually a poetic device if death is personified as a courtly suitor the process of dying is figured as a journey in death's carriage note especially the stanza number 3 we pass the school where children strove at dresses in the ring we pass the fields of gazing rain we pass the setting sun now this stanza we might say neatly symbolizes the three main stages of life childhood adulthood and age means the old age the first stage is symbolized obviously by the children themselves at the school we all enjoy uh, being around our teachers being around our friends at the school and the second stage is pictured as a harvest as life ripens towards full maturity when one actually transforms into an adult and there are so many responsibilities he has to fulfill so um, 
this is the reference to the setting sun and finally the old age where it is the reference to, to the side to the setting sun which represents the wanting of life you know the speaker passes all the three stages and route to her final stopping point the grave the use of dashes throughout the poem at dickinson trademark is also an interesting device it denotes passes pauses throughout the poem when perhaps the speaker pauses to silently reflect and invites the reader to do so as well the use of dashes can become quite intriguing leading to a sense of things left and said stands on number 4 The speaker shows uncertainty about the passing of the sun as she feels that they didn't pass over but it was the sun who caused them this glimpses that the speaker is resting somewhere and it is her soul traveling in the chariot the realization slowly creeps into the speaker as she feels the chill and understands the way she dresses which is inappropriate for a pleasant chariot ride and feels as if it is an abrupt gesture from death and the number 5 the chariot pauses at her grave which she calls as her house and it is nothing but a swelling on the ground it is indeed no house but the speaker's grave where she rests and watches the world eternally the journey of the speaker after witnessing different marvels of the world pauses at the grave and goes on indicating that there is an afterlife for her human race and she must continue her journey the grave is only the resting place stanza number 6 it is the last and the it is the concluding stanza of the poem actually the first line of the last stanza in because i could not stop for just revealing that it has been centuries since the death of the speaker although it was so many years ago that she feels the memory as fresh as it feels as if it happened on that very day she believes that it is the day she died when the forces of the chariot were pointing her towards eternity It is the reason for the inclusion of immortality. In the first stanza, as death the appears to be a gentleman approaches the soul for eternity, and one one has to uh, journey through without any respite. Now, analysis of why I could not stop for death. Because I could not stop for death is one of Emily Dickinson's longest and most fascinating poems. The title comes from the first line but in her own lifetime it did not have a title her poems were drafted without a title and only the num- and only numbered when published and after she died in 1886 this is a six stanza poem with full rhyme and slant rhyme in typical Dip- emily Dip- Dick- dickinson's fashion is full of dashes between and in the end of lines her subject choice that is dealt with in an odd and in an imaginative way the poet takes the reader on a mysterious journey through through time and on into a world beyond time so the obvious theme of this poem is that specifically a personal encounter with the character death who is male and drives a carriage this is special transportation from one world to the next with a steady 4 to 5 4 to 3 beat rhythm a supernatural experience captured in 24 lines emily dickinson wrote several poems about death a subject she had a particular talent for exploring in this poem death becomes a carriage and a driver or a driver and carriage metaphor or personification and arrives in taxi fashion to take the speaker on a supernatural journey beyond the grave we can take it that the speaker has no fear of death that is kind drives with care and has a formal politeness about him the most striking feature of this poem is the fee- is the use of the dash to temporarily um, pause a sentence or clause where the reader takes a fleeting breath before continuing this tends to isolate a phrase in a manner different to say a comma or colon and is used frequently by emily dickinson in most of her poems There is a regular four beat three beat rhythm in each quad train which helps reinforce the idea of a steady drive in a horse drawn carriage. The rhythm scheme is a b c d each sound line being full or slant with a fourth line me immortality away civility ground ground day eternity. 
Note that in stanza 4, the rhythm is changed, three beats and begin and end, suggesting a simple strange twist to proceedings as the sun passes them and shows the scantily dressed occupant. A tippet is a long cape or scar. Um, and tele is fine silk or cotton net. Gossamer is a delicate light material bringing an unreal aspect to the speaker who may well be a spirit form. Now the important contrasts. At different points in the poem, definite contrast strides which allow for restructure of meaning and reflection. The opening two lines affirm the reason why death stops. Because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. The end line of stanza, stanza 3 an opening line of stanza 4, we passed the setting sun, or rather he passed us. And in the opening two lines of the last stanza, since then it's centuries and yet feels shorter than the day. So he arrives in his carriage to pick her up at her house. So he, here the death is personified. He is the death. Further is death, not the because um, it's in proper noun here. Further, his um, manner is kindly while they dro drive off alone together. Death, the suitor, drives the carriage slowly, not wanting to rush or to go too fast for the speaker's comfort. His eyes seem to imply that he feels some concern for her feelings. The speaker claims that she has laid everything aside in order to pre prepare for his civility. It is almost like they are on a date. During their carriage ride together, they pass children playing, pretty views of nature and the sunset. Nighttime falls and the narrator grows cold and so death takes her to a house where she can feel comfortable again. Instead of being scary or strange, death in this poem acts more like a suitor than anything else. So this is the personification of death in this poem of Emily Dickinson. So what different poetic devices are used in this poem? First is the personification and the second one is alliteration. Personification is the giving of non-human, non-living things to human characteristics used call and qualities. In the first line, death is capitalized, which this means that Dickinson is giving death a proper name like a human, proper noun. The same goes for immortality. At the end of the stanza, not only is death named, he or she is given the ability to kindly stop for the speaker. Death cannot be literally kind or make the choice to stop for anyone. This is another example of personification. So the next uh, poetic device is alliteration. Alliteration is also used in the poem. Alliteration is the repetition of a consonant sound within a single line of poetry. This happens in the second, third, fourth, and sixth stanza. The use of the combined words in the lines holding the following pairings to note alliteration. Labor, leisure, recess, ring, gazing, rain, setting, sun, gossamer, growth, tippet, till, and horse's head. So this was the poem by Emily Dickinson and it is actually one of the best uh, known poems of Emily Dickinson uh, because it is melancholic one and um, so it deals with death and the afterlife. Um, uh, the poem Because I Could Not Stop for Death deals with the heavy subject like such as death time and eternity but Emily Dickinson deals with them in a very simple manner so that the idea or intention of this poem is clearly visible to the readers. One can comprehend infinite meanings on the poem and this is one of the crowning pieces of Dickinson because of the way that is personified as a gentle uh, suitor and how the true nature of death causes a realization in the speaker about the eternity of being in a grave. When um, Emily Dickinson in this poem as a narrator was taken away by death uh, and uh, she passes uh, 
through school where uh, there are so many children playing and then she felt cold so that was so a gentleman that he took her to her house means the grave so this is such a sweet and lovely poem so in this way we are not at all terrified of death this idea is very terrifying in reality and we are all scared to leave this world to leave our loved ones behind to leave our house our wealth everything that belongs to us cannot be with us forever but here uh, dickinson actually portrays a lovely character of death and that is very um, you know unusual in in the field of poetry because it is not very intense but a really simple matter a very smooth and casual way the way she uh, actually teaches us about death and it's and um, the way we were not fe- felt isolated from this eternal idea because yes death is inevitable and we are all going to die some day so emily dickinson really wants us to internalize this feeling to accept our reality to embrace death with um, you could say with bravery and not be afraid of it because this is the reality and you can't escape it it is your fate so thank you so much for listening to me and um, Emily Dickinson's poem actually come under the American literature so this is American literature we are studying and so like share and subscribe and please um, study really well get good marks secure a good job have a good life to have a good and wonderful life um, this is what i want for you people for my dear students so thank you so much thank you so much for watching and inshallah i'll come again in front of you um, with some good uh, informational video thank you so much bye